Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back. So in the last video, we set up the functionality for our player to slowly move slower over time and his color to change over time as well. And that gives us some visual feedback that we are running low on energy that we need to collect batteries. Now what I want to do is add more visual feedback for when we actually collect the batteries. So what we need to do, and we're going to do this in Blueprint because these type of things are just easier to do inside of Blueprint. Some things must be done in Blueprints. You can't avoid it. You can't avoid Blueprints, but you can try to mitigate how much time you spend inside of Blueprints. So go ahead and open up this BP battery class and go ahead and open it up as a full Blueprint editor. And if you remember in code, we made a call or a function if we go to our pickups battery pickup dot or pickup dot pickup base dot h we made this blueprint native event here and that is what we're going to use to tie this blueprint logic into that c plus plus code as well so what we need to do inside of our battery uh, blueprint classes come here to this function overrides and we should have an override for on pickup collected so go ahead and hit this drop down and override this on pickup collected function here now what we want to do here is spawn an emitter attached to our pickup mesh here and we want that emitter to kind of be attached to our character to show that it's charging our character as well so let's do the beginning part so if you drag off of this pin here you can start typing and looking for uh, function calls here we're going to say spawn emitter and we want to spawn emitter attached and this will bring up some options for us you can also do this call in C++ is the same. It takes in the same parameters and everything, but it's just easier to do what we're about to do inside of C++. So we want to use this electricity arc that we brought in from the uh, content examples. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I do not have any skill when it comes to particles. And I know the new system is Niagara. I'm hoping to learn it sometime within the next year. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll just use this pre-baked particle system here. And what we want to attach it to is our component, which is this static mesh component. So we can go ahead and drag this out and plug it in right there. And we want all these to remain default. But here we want to snap to target, including scale and then everything else is fine so now what we need to do is navigate to our actual particle system and we need to change some settings inside of it and uh, like i said this is something i i don't even understand i just know how to do it because i've already taken this tutorial before um, i'm just trying to bring it to you guys in a newer version of the engine but what we need to do is change the source to uh, emitter and we need to change the target to user set because we're going to set the target of this, uh, the, t uh, the end point of this particle system to our character. I'm going to leave it as default because I want to see what this looks like. Uh, without adjusting the settings like we did in the uh, the original tutorial. So I'm going to just hit Control shift s to save. And inside of here, where our battery is, I'm going to go ahead and get our player pawn or get our player character. And since this returns a character class, uh, we don't have to necessarily cast to our character because we just need to get some base lot uh, not base logic but we need to get some base variables off of the uh base class a uh, base character class so pull off of this and let's go get mesh which is a part of the character class that returns the skeletal mesh 
And on that skeletal mesh, we want to go ahead and get a socket location. So get socket location. And just to uh, just to show off where you would get this socket location from, I'm going to compile this here. Um, pick up meshes, blueprint visible, but not blueprint read only and read write. So we got a little error there. We need to go to our C++ code and change this mesh to uh, blueprint read only. So just come to your code file and type in blueprint read only. And so I'm gonna just rerun the editor after changing that file. Hopefully it doesn't take forever to compile. Okay, so that didn't take too long. Uh, like I said, previous videos, I really do the spies compiling right now on Unreal Engine 5. So I'm doing my own project in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, so let's go back to our battery pickup class. And we've already changed the, the target. So what we need to do is, oh, I was going to show you guys the bone name. Uh, so we come in here to our third person CPP file or folder, go open up our blueprints in our character blueprint. We can use this icon here to navigate to this skeleton. And then let's take a look at the skeleton. And basically sockets and bones are kind of like one and one and intertwined with each other. Uh, but you just would pick a name from this list of bones or sockets and paste it inside that socket name. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this one, copy selected bone names, get that spine zero two and come back here and I will paste it inside of here. So now off of this return value, because this is going to return this emitter here and we want to set beam target point. We want to set it to our player's socket location. So now if we go and give that a test, uh, let me go ahead and just compile this just to make sure I'm going to go ahead and test it out. You're going to see we're running into an issue. And that is that our, first of all, that beam is bright as hell. And uh, second of all, these things don't destroy themselves anymore. So, we need to do a couple of things. One of those things being we need to go into this particle emitter and we need to change a couple of things. We need to change the size. Let's see. Um, maybe two is fine. And we need to change this start color here because this is very bright. So let's go ahead and say Let's divide this by 10. So let's do five. I can also go divide by 10 here and it'll do it for me. So divide by 10 and hopefully that looks a little bit better for us. I'm, I'm just going to double check. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's not as bright there. Okay, so we definitely want to go ahead and destroy these after a certain amount of time. And that's why I say this is easier to do in Blueprint because even though you can call a delay in code, it's just a lot simpler to set up inside of Blueprint. So put this right there. But this right here, I really hate inside of Blueprint. So what we need to do is drag off a sequence node. And this will allow us to do two things simultaneously. One of those things will be a delay. And we want to go ahead and set this delay for one second because one second we want to we want to wait one second until we destroy our actor. And remember that is called in our parent function that uh, we made that implementation call of. So if we go to our battery pickup, look at the implementation override here, you'll see we have this call here that hits that says destroy. So right now we're overriding the the source 
call. We're not calling any of the source logic right now. But once we right click on this and add call to parent function, this will call the parent function, which will print, which pick up we picked up and it will call that destroy function as well. So we are going to do that. And then on the second input here or output, we're going to if you select this and press control W, it will duplicate it. And I want to pass this through here and delay for a tenth of a second. And we want to just loop right back to this beam target point so that it'll update for a, a whole second until it gets destroyed. So now if we go back, compile that, we go back inside of the editor here. We will go ahead and collect it. You see it follows us. See the electricity follows us. And now I'm moving at a super slow rate. So let me go ahead and just tweak this because I know for sure we need to change that uh, decay rate. So let me just come up here to my third person character and I'm gonna look for decay. Uh, or uh, what do we call that delay rate? Let me just open up the full blueprint editor because I know we did something where we can adjust the amount of decay and delay. Mm. Let me go back to the code file and see exactly what it's called. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not in the character class. It's inside of the, uh, the game mode class because that's where our rules are set. So I need to navigate to my core folder and open up my game mode class and set this delay time to maybe one second and maybe reduce this to 25. Maybe that'll make more sense. I'm gonna just dock this up here just to have it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and test that out again. See if we maybe could play the game and have a little fun before we die out here. Uh oh, we're dying out. Eh. Yeah, so I guess what I need to change is the amount of charge that the batteries give me um, and how frequently they spawn. Because they spawn too sporadically right now for how fast we're moving and how fast we're draining. So I guess what I could do just to combat that is to strain us by five and then test it. And now we can actually Yeah, so it's not as bad, but it's still pretty, you know, it's still pretty bad. We still getting drained pretty quickly here. Eh, come here. You, you too. I want you. So maybe let's just keep decreasing this. Maybe two is a good number. And our delay time is one second. So let's see. Every second we're decreasing by two. And I don't think that our delay and decay is being passed over. So what I'm going to do is press play here. I want to look at my character and see how fast we're going down here. So let's just go to power. Yeah, we're still decreasing by 50. Um, and is that because, yep, okay, for some reason, <laughs> the game mode is not being saved as the override for the world. That might be an Unreal Engine 5 bug. Okay, so let's play this again and we'll see that uh, our delay rate is actually making sense now, so. Yeah, there we go. We're actually able to play now. Okay, so now what we can do is maybe take that back up to probably like 15. And we can also move this back down to 0.5. Just 
just to see. Just to see. Okay. That's decent. Actually, moving at this speed makes things harder to collect. But as you see, our our um, particle effects are showing us that we're collecting whichever batteries we're collecting. They're destroying themselves after we collect them. I'm probably going to have them where they do not collide with the character, because if you see this, we, we kind of have a collision with them. So I'll probably set them to overlap the character or overlap pawns. That way they can still maintain their, um, they can still maintain their collision with the world, but they won't actually collide with the pawn. So I'm gonna come inside the battery pickup. I'm going to select this pickup mesh. Then I'm gonna go down to its collision settings. And then right now I set the block all dynamic. I'm gonna change that to custom. And then for pawn, I'm gonna just toggle overlap. And this will overlap the pawn. And let's see. That way we're not fucking getting beat up by these. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we could go ahead and continue to drain or continue to tweak this draining amount. So maybe I believe 35 was the number we had. And even though we're not at a polishing stage, it's always good to, to, to mess with the things that you can mess with. Like polish the things that you can polish without suffering and try to tweak things while you can before you forget about them and make make the play testing as best as possible while you can there's no reason to say i'm gonna put this off to the polish stage if i could just change the value right here right now and change this to make it something that will work for us and you'll see that 35 is probably too lenient or half a second is probably too lenient. So let's go 0.25 and that'll probably be what I need there. So you guys keep playing, keep testing around, keep changing the values. Um, and I will see you in the next video where we get started on actually implementing more functionality and making this game a little bit more fun and having a little bit more uh, feedback to, for the player to see what is actually going on. If you're ready for that, go ahead and join me in the next video and I'll see you in there. Peace.